Hello everybody, Luke here and um, getting off to another blog post here in the beginning of 2018. So this is the New Year's resolution season so I wanted to make this uh, you know, come out right around the time of the resolutions. And so today's topic is the four pillars of weight loss. And kind of a funny story about how I came across these four pillars as it were. I'm actually listening to a different book in my car right now. I do a lot of audiobooks because with kids at home it's hard to actually sit down and read for any length of time. So I listen to a lot of audiobooks and the one I'm reading, uh, listening to right now is called Profit First. And the guy's talking all about how to use different uh, ways of looking at money and putting them in different bank accounts and things like that, just to make sure that your business is actually profitable and things like that. So the, the nicest thing about reading any type of business book is that typically the lessons or the philosophies are pretty much applicable to most parts of your life. And so this guy goes off on a different tangent. And he starts talking about the four pillars of weight loss. And I've got them written down a sticky note here in case I forget. Um, but I'm going to get into those in just a second. But I want to step backwards first and say, again, it's the beginning of the year, 2018, and everyone's trying to make positive changes. And uh, one of the hardest things to do this time of year, I think, is we all dive right into the strategies first. So I'm about to dive into the four strategies here with you in a minute. And a lot of us dive into the strategies, and it's usually the wrong place to start. So I'm not trying to talk you out of watching the video because it's good information and I think you'll probably find it useful. But before you start to look at strategies, what I want you to do is figure out what you actually are trying to accomplish. And if possible, I just wrote an email about this. If you could change your viewpoint of the problem and figure out what you're willing to do over a long period of time to achieve your goal, that's going to really help you. So I'm not going to go into too many details, but a lot of times if you just look at your problem as weight loss is the issue, what you want to probably do instead is look at, well, there's probably a few small things that you could change going forward to be healthier in general, and weight loss will come with that, but your ultimate goal then is to move closer and closer to health. And I have a, you know, one of the things I like to use in my personal or business life, whatever you want to call it, is the compound effect, where basically you're just making some small positive changes that are moving you closer to your goal, and over a long enough period of time, you will get there. One of the biggest mistakes folks make with trying to lose weight is they want to lose weight quickly. They want to see the results within a week or two weeks or a month or whatever. And it's just a recipe for disaster, to be quite honest. I mean, you can lose a, a, a significant chunk of weight fairly quickly sometimes, depending on how extreme you're willing to get. But ultimately, your long-term success depends on what positive changes you're willing to make in your life for the rest of your life, potentially. And then you might lose weight very slowly but that's okay because you're comfortable with it. You have a long-term strategy. So anyways, I know I've just wasted the first three minutes telling you why um, maybe to not watch the video or whatever, but let me tell you these four strategies. So if you make that kind of that mindset shift where you're ready to do that, here's four things that might help you. So this guy, again, interesting. He's a financial guy, but he's interested in weight loss. So he's basing this kind of off of like research. So the four pillars he's got. Um, the first one is they researched, they said, if you, if you eat off of a smaller plate, you will tend to eat less. So that's his first pillar, is eat off of a smaller plate. We have these, I forget what the specific details were, but back in like the early 1900s, plates were something like 27% smaller than they are now. So as with everything in American life, especially getting supersized, um, if you have a bigger plate, you will tend to take more food and you'll tend to just clean your plate. So one quick and easy strategy there is to have a smaller plate. You can use your kids' plates if you want. Um, the next strategy, which um, I like this one, it's eat your vegetables first. So if you've got to have, you're still not going to change necessarily the type of food you eat, but you're going to change the uh, distribution of food. So eat more vegetables, eat them first, fill up on those, fill up on, let's say, your high quality fats and meats next. And then if you're still going to have the things which in my opinion will cause you to gain weight, like your pastas and your breads and your grains, then eat those last so you won't eat as many of them. So kind of a nice little strategy um, again, over a long period of time, if you're eating more vegetables and fewer of those, you know, uh, simple carb type things, you're going to lose weight over a given period of time. So nice strategy there. If you want to take that one to the next extreme, of course, you could cut out certain things off your plate, but let's not get too extreme. Okay. Um, the next one that, that he recommends, which a lot of people recommend is to eat before you get hungry. If you wait till you're hungry, people tend to eat more. Um, so, you know, you hear this a lot with people that say, well, eat like six small meals throughout the day, have some nuts here, have, you know, a handful of trail mix there, whatever. Um, I personally don't like this strategy, I'm just going to say it, although I think it does work for some people. I don't like it because I think there's a reason why you get hungry, and when you get hungry, your body's telling you to eat. So, I can go either way on that one, but again, for some people, that might be a strategy that helps them. I don't like it, but, you know, for you, it might help you. So, think of that one. That's the third pillar. The fourth one I really like um, is remove temptations. 
So when I first went, I did, I'm gluten-free. If you don't already know that, I'm weird like that. Um, but with years ago when I was trying gluten-free, the best strategy was to remove all of the gluten from the house. If the gluten was gone, my ability to eat the gluten went down considerably. It's kind of like at the holidays. It's ridiculously hard to not eat cookies or candy at holidays because they're always there. You go to any of your friend's house, there's a plate of cookies sitting there. You come to my office, even though I'm preaching health and wellness, and there's a plate of cookies sitting there. You go to grandma's house and there's um, a whole bowl of candy. So if you can take away all of those things, hey Steph, you can, uh, <laughs> I guess I'm on video. Um, you have a better shot. So if there's certain things you do not want to eat, like your um, certain you know treats and things like that, then just get rid of them. Take them out of the house. And again, if you're looking at this from the viewpoint that you can make some positive changes over the course of life, start with those things that you know you just do not want to have, period. Um, which I think for a lot of people is like sugary drinks like pop or specific types of candy or cookies or whatever it is. I mean, if, if your long-term strategy is to get rid of these things altogether, great. If that's where you're willing to start, then go for it. So um, so those are my helpful tips for today. And those are the four pillars. I'll run through them again. Smaller plates, eat your veggies first, eat before you're hungry, so eat smaller meals, and then remove as many temptations as possible. So hope that helps you in 2018. And um, if you want to leave me a comment or tell me how you're doing, that would be great too. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.